Hello, welcome back, Matthew Talk Time. Hope you guys are all well. I, um, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Different kind of hello, anyway. Um, hope you guys are all good. What is your drink? I need to know. So I've, uh, I've been uh, uh, slack in not asking everybody. So put in your brackets, coffee. I think coffee was the winner last month. I need to get back into this. I need to know what you guys are all consuming. I had a friend recently asked me, what's this mate talk thing that you're doing? And so I went into detail about mate, Argentinian drink. It's a, you know, it's a um, communal thing. We all share, we talk, friends, mate, uh, sorry, mate means friends in Australia. So this is what we're doing. Um, friends talking about perfume and actually, and connecting on perfumery. And actually it's on that that I'm gonna lead straight into this. Have a look at these brilliant people. One of the things that I said at the very start of the year is I wanna do more and more connections. Um, break that fifth wall. So there's a lot of everything that I'm doing these days, obviously it's still in line with you know creating content and all that sort of thing, but I wanna connect with you guys as much as I can. Uh, one thing that is, has happened, and just a heads up, comments, and I've mentioned this before, have exploded on me. I, I just, honestly, I, I wake up in the morning and there's at least 15 to 20 comments that are in there and I try my best to get to them, uh, but the day, you know, with everything else that happens and, and before I know it, I've just, anyway, I'm doing my best. I promise that I will continue to um, look at those comments and respond to people, especially when you ask me a question, I do want to respond to that. Uh, However, more and more, what I've, is, you know, one in one en engagements. Uh, so whilst, um, uh, sorry, my brain's going everywhere. Let me just, whew, let us drink some mate. So what I want to talk about today are a number of different you know, things that were, that's coming up, things that happened, what occurred, and, um, and why am I, actually another thing that, why am I late? This thing is staring me in the face. So normally, I, uh, Mata Talk comes out, I think a few days, depending when this one's gonna go out. But the bottom line is it, it should have already gone out. I was waiting for this baby. This is Sado Naso. I have not sampled it yet. And you can see it's a, it's a very intriguing way of testing. So it's not a traditional tester. It's come in this really cool packaging. So once I rip this baby, rip, I was gonna give it a bit of a sound effect. Once I rip this baby, I will test it. I will smell it on this mate talk. So I don't know what this is gonna, I, and purposely, I have no idea. Other than the little video that I saw, which I stopped after five seconds. And the reason why is that I was on a plane, I was watching this, was it on? No, it was on the train, on the train. I was watching this thing and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen that video. What is happening? Um, I just felt like, who? You know, I'm like if someone's looking over my shoulder, they're like, what are you looking at? So I stopped. I haven't re gone back to it because I was a little bit afraid, to be honest. Um, I get the gist. It's, you know, it's a, it's a fragrance for intimacy, I guess, maybe. Um, anyway, so I've got that. We're gonna talk about this in a few minutes. Before I go there, I did this incredible tour with these people. Well, actually, the, I did this, uh, these incredible these incredible people joined me on this tour. The tour was incredible, but it's the people who made it incredible. Um, during Exxon's, I had the idea, well, in the lead up to it, I had the idea, wouldn't it be cool to host people through Exxon's, knowing that I'd been there previously, and then what would it be like to actually um, walk on, walk through the place on your own? Is it a little bit overwhelming? My short answer is yes. So what if I had a curated tour that walked you through. And that was what the motivation behind this was. Uh, I want to read a few of these comments because this leads me into the, the next things that I want to talk about. And this is from, firstly from Luke. And he wrote, so I have to lift up my glasses, otherwise I can't see. He says, and now that I am more or less rested, I'd like to take the time to thank you immensely for today. It was a great opportunity for me and your enthusiasm, patience and openness were paramount in making this a success. You spoke about the small anxiety of meeting some of your subscribers. Totally legit, by the way. Now, during lunch, sorry, footnote, during lunch, I mentioned to everybody that I was grateful that no one stabbed me today. And what I was trying to say there was, um, I guess there is a level of apprehension. And they, and the funny thing was they actually reflected it back on me. Um, so the level of apprehension is, I don't know, 
I mean, we see each other, well, we communicate through this medium, but not necessarily know one another. Anyway, he continues to write. Um, but I can say that I was a little bit suspicious about meeting the real Marcelo, inverted commas, and how different you could be from the Marcelo we see on YouTube. But that apprehension dissipated the moment we met. And the truth is, it was a two-way street. Obviously, in this case here, Luke was a bit nervous going, what's this guy gonna really, really be about? Um, and I was thinking, who are these people exactly? <laughs> are they gonna be like, you know, uh, um, I always think of, anyway, I won't. No, I'm not. I always think of that fan that, that ended up shooting uh, John Lennon, all right? So I'm like, yeah, I love you, and I get stabbed. Um, so I, yeah, I was a little bit like, hopefully these people are just perfume lovers and that's it, you know, we can just enjoy time together. Um, so that was from Luke. Then I had this beautiful message from this awesome man here. Now I wanna point out, and I let me just say this, Harold, your dad is awesome. So on the day I see uh, Harold and I hadn't met Harold. I just figured because everybody else was there This is the last person that was coming up and I see this young man walking towards me and I'm like this must be Harold and I see another man with him and I'm like who's this other guy? Um, much older very serious looking and so I was a little bit like mm, what's about to happen here and uh, In two seconds. I realized this is Harold's dad So going back to what I was saying Harold your dad is awesome because he was worried now, Harold, they flew in from the Netherlands, I believe. And so, you know, I think I would have done the same thing. I would have jumped on a plane with my son, who was eight, uh, so Harold's 18, and uh, just to see who exactly, or what, they, what, would, what exactly was going on here. Anyway, Harold writes this. So this is the photo that he took with, alongside me on. And just so you know, I actually organized uh, for, I guess, an exclusive VIP behind the scene access to all these um, different perfumers and uh, different brands. Uh, I purposely curated it that way so that everyone got a, a unique experience with these, with these individuals and had a chance to ask questions and engage in, in much more than just smell and spray and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, so Harold says, on seeing Pictures of myself, so seeing pictures of myself is hard. Haven't smiled so much in a long time. Thank you for the trip, Marcelo. It was amazing. You're welcome. The last one is from this lovely lady here who also expressed, uh, you know, apprehension going, you know, what's, who is this guy? Is he, you know, is he, is he crazy? As in, in me. Um, so anyway, she wrote this. Grazie mille. I love that Italian. So rather than just say thank you, you say grazie mille, a thousand thank yous. Anyway, the experience was so wonderful and I'm so grateful that you offered it. I don't think I could have enjoyed it even a fraction of how much I enjoyed the, the expo without, being, uh, without you being the guide and leading the way. Um, so this was truly perfect for me to be able to connect with the perfumers and hearing their stories. It means so much more to me and feels like I really have a part of the voice and spirit when I'm experiencing the perfumes, which I really fell in love with. And that leads me to this experience. Now, this has been, so the, the France perfume tour, or the France perfume experience that uh, Kevin and I are building, uh, the reception has been in, uh, phenomenal. So it, like a few minutes, sorry, I just got pinged in. Um, the moment that I released it, we already sold one. Um, we only have a few seats left and um, we, we were basically wanting to put out the last call, those who might be interested in joining myself and Kevin in France. Now we're gonna be doing uh, three days of the tour will be in Paris, three days of the tour will be then in Grasse in the south of France. What the, the ticketed price includes is accommodation. And then actually, we're, we're asking people to arrive on the Monday, the day before the tour. So the tour will begin on the Tuesday. Uh, arrive on the Monday, your, the price includes that accommodation. All right? So that way people can come in at their leisure and ready and refreshed for the next day as we kick off. Now, I was recently in Paris. And the purpose for that trip was to um, make sure that the places that we're gonna to go to, what we see on paper, you know, we wanted to make sure that it translated correctly in real life. One of the things was, for example, we were gonna book a hotel in the uh, Marais, Le Marais. I'm pretty certain that's how you say it, Le Marais. Uh, in, that, in that particular region, I always second guess myself these days. I don't know, when it comes to the French language, I'm like, just be confident, man, just say it. And, and most of the time I am saying it, if not 
somewhat correctly, let's put it that way. Anyway, so we were gonna go into that uh, Le Marais area. We discovered that that's the wrong place. It was way too touristy. Um, yes, of course, you know, it is Paris, it is a very tourist location, but we wanted something that had more soul to it. Uh, so we've actually looking, we've got three hotels, we're, we're narrowing down we're in the final conversation with these particular properties. Uh, so that, that'll come out soon. I'll actually talk about it next week for those who might be interested to know where we're staying exactly. This is a curated tour. The intention behind it is really to uh, be one-on-one -on -one with the perfumers. In this case, we've partnered very closely with both Javoy and Francois Hennen and also Quinton from Sorador in the south of France. Uh, the intention is that we really want to have you guys spend time, enjoy, and be with like-minded. And, and I think that was what happened during the, the Exxon's tour. We were all like-minded, enjoying something that we're so passionate about, which is beautiful perfumery. If you are interested, have a look at the link below. You'll see that uh, it'll push you across to the website. There, as I mentioned, there's, uh, so we've, we've sold six already. Um, there's a few seats left. So for those who are interested to, to join us, Join us, it'll be fun. Allora, let's move on. Let me just... This gives me a chance to catch up on my brain. All right, so another thing that I am gonna continue to do, this is something that I'm super excited about, and that is creating these meetups. Um, I will be, so I've booked it, and it's, it's paid for and ready to go. I will be in the US in mid-September. So the intention will be that uh, I'm speaking to some uh, organizations or, or boutiques basically. What, what I could, actually, you know what? I'm gonna open it up to you guys. Any recommendations? Obviously the obvious is in uh, West Coast to go to Lucky Scent. I believe they're in Beverly Hills. Go to this store. But is there someone else? Is there somewhere else that would be cool for us to meet up? Um, I would like it to be something like an oligarch, for instance, or even like in Milan, we went to the foyer. It was so, it was an intimate space, but enough room for all of us to be comfortable and move around. So the idea is, if you have got any recommendations in the West Coast area and the East Coast, so we're gonna do both, all right? So uh, I will be, so mid-September, I haven't given dates just yet, so I'm sort of working myself out. But I have booked my tickets. I will be in the States mid-September and I wanna do a meetup on the West Coast and then do a meetup on the East Coast also. Uh, those dates will come out. If you've got any recommendations of locations or prop over um, boutiques that I should check out, please put them in the comments. I'll make sure to reach out and start that process there. Now, in Australia, because I don't wanna miss, I don't want the Aussies to miss that. We did an awesome meetup at the Oligarch Boutique. Um, you, most people know that I have a very good relationship with Libertine Perfumery here in, in this country. We do a lot of work together, which is awesome. And I'll, I'm about to announce something else that we're doing. If you, uh, so if you're in Melbourne, um, I'm organizing a date very soon with Libertine here in Melbourne. So I'll do, a, I'm planning to do a meetup at the Libertine store, which is in Myers in town. The idea behind it, like the others, is Let's meet, let's talk, let's show me the perfumes you love. I'm gonna show you the perfumes that I love within this store. Um, I have, I'm trying to do a little something. So when we did the foyer meetup, I was, uh, spoke to them and they were very generous and gave uh, a, very, a very generous discount to the people who decided to buy something on the day. Just so you know, I get nothing. It's not a, so, and then this is the absolute truth. I get nothing for this. This is purely about an opportunity to connect with you guys talk about perfume. That's what I wanna do. So we're gonna do a meetup in Melbourne, uh, wanna do a meetup in Sydney, and then do the new farm store, which I've only been to once, and I wanna go to the Libertine. I've heard it's just, well, I've only been to once, so I've seen it, uh, but it's a glorious store. I know there's a lot, a lot of brands in there, so we'll do that also. This leads me to, have a look at this. This is the talented, the very, suave Mr. Michael Marzano. Now, Michael and I, end of last year, we filmed a series of classes together. And uh, the idea behind this, so for those who are familiar with Libertine here in Australia, what they do, they're awesome at educating on perfume and also perfume love. Uh, that basically, I mean, very early on before I even started the channel, I was actually engaging in these masterclasses 
Michael is an awesome teacher. So uh, we partnered together, so NFC and Libertine, we've created these online classes. And the idea behind them, and this was really, uh, we, we had been talking that the one thing about the master classes or the live master classes is that if you can't make that date, and I've had a few of those, I, I just missed out on the Orman Jane one, which I was, but anyway, I just, I just couldn't make it. Um, the advantage here is that you can now watch these classes at your leisure. Libertine continue to do the same thing as they've always done, and that is they'll send you a box with samples, uh, with the little champagne bottle, um, or sparkling wine, sorry, I have to eat. It's, you can't call it champagne, it's sparkling wine. Uh, with the sparkling wine, all the, so all the bits and pieces are there, and even a credit, so that if you decide to buy a bottle, you will get a credit on that purchase. The difference is, you can now do it at your leisure. And so, uh, myself and Michael, we've created five different classes, brands that I absolutely love. And the big, I guess the setup is, Michael is, he is, for me, the, the, the all knowledgeable, I was gonna say all knowledgeable brain power. So he has uh, the, the, the best understanding when it comes to these perfume brands. I'm just the perfume lover. And so what, it, I guess my role here is really just to, as Michael is sharing, for me to, I'm, I'm, essentially I'm taking your place in that moment, to ask the questions, to find out a bit more, to, uh, to discover the brand deeper, and also I guess to, uh, you, you're getting another perspective on that particular fragrance because and we've all discovered this that what one person smells isn't necessarily what the other one is also smelling you know we all interpret things in a very different way anyway so if you're interested in these master classes these online have a look there's links below for each five of these so you can click on that and explore them uh, in much more depth bada bing all right let me um That's it, that's the wrap up. Now I'm gonna to go to the, I'm, I'm equal part excited and scared. So here it is. This is Sado Nasso. And, um, and I'm gonna experience it for the first time on the channel, here we go. As I said, I'm equal part, um, hang on, how does this thing open? Are you, I'm, I'm actually shaking. <laughs> Why am I shaking? I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm thinking of shaking because I saw that ad, not the ad, the, the video. So here is the, um, can you see that little bubble? So there's, it um, doesn't have a smell. It doesn't give me anything away. Um, I'm nervous because I saw that video and I'm like, what is going on? This is like, this is crazy. So my assumption on this fragrance here, so I'm stalling now. My assumption on this fragrance here is that it's going to be somewhat intensely musk. I'm also anticipating uh, uh, Alessandro where he pushes boundaries, you know, really intensely. And so I'm guessing that maybe he is going to go for that sassiness that occurs when two bodies come together in amorous ways. All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna, it's a weird, uh, look, I don't know, this is, I would have preferred to put a, done a spray. One thing that I love about Alessandro, he doesn't reveal notes, so it is what you think it is. Whoa, this is gorgeous. <laughs> oh, and you know what? It, when I cracked the seal, I was, I was trying to cheat. I was opening up the seal just to get a little, because I don't like, excessively sassy fragrances. And I just thought this was gonna be like, I don't know, crutch smell or something, you know? And I did, I, I'm like, I don't wanna be smelling that. You know, I'm not interested in that. On first smell, wow, this is really good, guys. Heads up, everyone. This is really, 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 really impressive. On that opening, it's, it's floral. It has a, it has a delicate, nature to it the musk is there there is a musk that is that is lingering just in the background but opening notes i'd be curious to know how it does on the spray because you know that spray sort of it releases those molecules in the air at the same time okay it is it's always oh, funny it's going it's almost i get a slight hint of silver musk so I'm, i am getting the musk, but not that heavy animalic sort of sassiness. There is a musk component to it, 
but it has some florals and it, not that it smells. This is not what I thought it was gonna be. I don't know why I was so scared. This is gorgeous. Boom, this is gorgeous. This is really, so if you saw the ad, that video, um, again, I, I made the assumption that it was gonna be sort of really heavy, leatherish, um, musky, you know, crutch. <laughs> Sassiness. There is sass though, just give you a heads up. Oh no, no, but this is, this is, actually, you know how interesting, this makes me, I'll keep this tasteful. This makes me think of a hotel room. This makes me think of, you know, going away for a weekend and uh, yeah, really sexy. Um, so. I don't get the, 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 you know, again, I always, I've always said it on the channel, Alessandro Galtieri, the man is, yes, he's a genius perfumer. He's such a good marketer. He just knows how to push these buttons to get, you know, dialogue happening. And even to the point I've heard, I've sort of read some comments where people have written in going, look, I loved your work, but after seeing or starting to see this new ad, I will never buy your product again. Um, you know, it's, it was it was repulsive. And like I said, I saw five seconds into it when you see that prosthetic uh, strap on that the young lady has. And I'm like, what the hell? What, you know, what, what are we looking at here? Um, so, yep, yeah, hey, it creates conversation. It creates, like, did you know? I mean, how disgusting. It creates conversation, which then, well, the bottom line is humans, it creates intrigue. Forget the ad, everybody, forget the ad. Um, go find this weird looking sample thing. Uh, I'm gonna be really excited to actually wear this. But yeah, it actually, just then I got like a floral sweetness, almost vanilla, but then there's a little bit of that sassy undertone of the musk, but not animalic. Success, winning, winning. Man, I do love Alessandro's. Very clever. Now, the, how did I get this? I think I started to say at the start I, I, that, yeah, the, the marketing manager for uh, Alessandro, for the, his company overall, um, reached out. Um, we had a really awesome communication. We were talking through WhatsApp and all that sort of stuff. I kept missing, we kept missing each other during Exxon's. Uh, we actually had two meetings, three meetings set up, and I got pulled away in different directions and then she couldn't make one. So in the end, we never, we never met each other. We never caught up with each other. She said, don't worry, I'll still put this in the mail. Hence why I was delaying the, the Mata talk. So uh, it's really cool. I'm, I'm really excited that we started a conversation. Uh, nobody read anything into that. It was that, you know, I know that one, and I love you guys, I really do. Uh, one subscriber said that, you know, I, I should become the, um, the, uh, the ambassador. Alessandra is the ambassador. Uh, so there's nothing more than they've just said, you know, we like the work you're doing, which is very, uh, it's humbling for me. It's very, I'm very gracious. I'm very um, happy that, that that's the case. What I want to do today is being that, and I didn't know what this was going to be about, um, being that this obviously centered around intimacy, sex, if you want to call it. Um, I thought this will set the tempo. You ready? So there's an awesome uh, poet, I'm not sure uh, whether she was a woman or she is a woman, I think she's still alive. Her name is Rihanna. I think, I think you gotta really accentuate the H, the Rihanna. Um, and she wrote poetry and she wrote this, cause I may be bad, but I'm perfectly good at it. Sex in the air, I don't care. I love the smell of it. Um, and I thought, well, yeah, you know, I think that, um, I think that sex does have a smell. You know, there is a particular sassiness that happens, uh, that it emanates, you know, pheromones. I know that bees, for instance, uh, it's all through pheromones that they communicate. So I'm gonna say humans were the same. I wanna give you another, actually, no, I was gonna give you another example, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, but I will read you another grand poet. Uh, and he says, this is a man this time, and he says, oh, it's natural, it's chemical, let's do it. It's logical, habitual. Can we do it? 
It's sensual, but most of all, sex is something that we should do. Sex is something for me and you. Sex is natural, sex is good. Not everybody does it, and here's the punchline, but everybody should. Uh, that was uh, Jorge Miquel was the, uh, the poet to that particular performance piece there. Um, and he was a performance artist, yes. So what I wanna do today is uh, share some fragrances that it's almost sex is in the air kind of scent. Some of them are, are obvious and you'll go, yep, it makes sense. And others, you're gonna go, how exactly? But I will tell you. The obvious one first. Sorry, my camera stopped. It's like, I do, don't like speaking about these kind of things, but it's like, it's all right. You know, like George Michel said, you know, I re sex is natural, sex is good. There's nothing wrong with it. And we're not gonna get into the puerile territory. We're just gonna stay, you know, adults about this. Uh, so anyway, so Africa elephant. Uh, so the, the reason for this is that the, the elephant is a very intense love maker, essentially, as an animal. Um, when they go in heat, so as I said, they, they, the males emanate a particular smell, which then draws the female. Um, but then when the male and female copulate, the woman does this, or the woman, the, the female elephant, does this low rumble, this baby, what's your name, kind of sort of sound, um, which then draws other males. And supposedly there is a, it's a love fest, uh, multiple partners. And uh, yeah, it's a essentially love fest. And it's interesting that after they copulate, um, the two elephants, the male and female, they, they, um, the, they sort of, their tusks play with one another and the male stays with her and caresses her and stuff like this, which is, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's nice. Anyway, so what's this got to do with the, this fragrance? This is, if you look at the notes in this fragrance, you think to yourself, this is like, uh, like this beast mode, scary fragrance, which you can never wear. Frankincense, civet, um, styrax, um, myrrh, labdanum, castrinum, um, leather, oud, uh, ambergris. What do you think to yourself, my goodness gracious, who could wear this? This is divine. If you haven't had a chance to check out Nishane's Africa Oliphant, it starts off very, um, very appealing. There is a softness to it. It does go into very sort of musky, very sensual, almost um, carnal sort of sort of scent profile. It's very deep, and really, this is for someone who's going out, who's looking for a partner. There is, I don't know, there's. I mean, Historically, musks were always used as, uh, I guess, um, scent lures. Uh, and I know that's how the animal kingdom uses it. You know, it uses its own musk to sort of project and, and attract a lover. And so this is what the, the essence of this particular fragrance is. There is an animalic component to it, which creates, uh, it's just really deep and sexy. This is a really deep, sexy fragrance. Strongly recommended as one of those when you're on the, you know, the lookout. All right, the next sex in the air kind of fragrance that I, um, that I put out there or I love wearing is, and I'm gonna, the next two are gonna be Alessandro's creation, Nasomato. One is Pardon. For me, I, anyway, I love wearing this as a very confident, masculine, uh, I know that Sandra loves the scent of this on me. She loves, she will breathe, and I think, I think I've mentioned that when I have a fragrance that she really enjoys, she buries her nose in my arm, my body, and begins to inhale. I had a friend recently who also, under recommendation, I said, you know, you should really ch check this fragrance out. He too bought it, uh, and he experienced a very similar attraction to, uh, sorry, the, the person he was dating with also very much enjoyed this scent profile on him. I think it's patchouli. Again, Alessandro doesn't reveal notes, but it has a chocolatey patchouli kind of vibe. It's woody, but it's also very, it's, it has an aromatic brightness to it. Um, it's gorgeous. This is, and one, as a man, I love wearing it because it makes me, I don't know, it makes me feel good and confident and, and sexy. Um, and two, that as a, as an attractive scent profile, it's gorgeous, it, it works. On the flip side, 
I've mentioned before, I love narcotic Venus. So the key player here, I smell this and it's Sandra for me. The cure, it's Sandra for me. I, and actually not only, I can picture Sandra. Anyway, um, the key player here is tuberose, but done in such a carnal, such a sensual way, such a, um, I don't want to go into too much detail other than this is just, this is gorgeous on a woman. Uh, I know that I've, I've had some men write that they enjoy wearing um, Narcotic Venus. For me, I associate too deeply to my wife that uh, I can't, I don't think I could wear it for myself. Um, but I know as a, as a female fragrance, as a, a fragrance for a woman, uh, I think it also, I, I don't know, there's a sense of, it projects more femininity in my, in my view. Um, and again, I, I am associating it to my wife. So this is a gorgeous fragrance that she loves wearing. When I smell it, I get impure thoughts. I'm just gonna put it out there. Um, but gorgeous fragrance, strongly recommend it. I asked Sandra as I was preparing this, you know, what, what fragrance do I wear that you go, mm, baby, what's your name? And she says it in that Latin, no, she doesn't. Um, so she, and I said, and believe it or not, she said this, gentle fluidity, MFK. And now it, but you know, when she said this, it made perfect sense because whenever I wear it, one time, this, so the, the, the way that our, our um, house is in my the, um, bathroom, we have a window that opens to the background, in, to the backyard. Anyway, so I, um, she, Sandra must have been in the backyard. Well, she was in the backyard. And I had just sprayed it and she called out. She's like, oh, what are, you, mm, what are you wearing? What are you wearing? And I'm like, oh, you like this one? And she's like, that's beautiful. So she, one, it has awesome projection and has this great, um, yeah, see out, well, projection in this case. Um, but two, the scent profile of this, this is the one that my, that my wife would go, mm, baby, what's your name? So uh, yeah, Gentle Fluidity Silver. I like wearing it because it, it's, it's aromatic, but yet it has wood components to it. it has, it's long lasting. Um, I don't get a, like a sexy vibe from it. You know, I don't make, makes me feel, but Sandra likes it. All right, so there's that. And the last one, since we started with our good friend, Alessandro Caltieri, let's end with him. And this is Doodle. I don't wear it as my, as Borat would say, sexy time fragrance. Um, for me, this is masculine, confident. Uh, there is a sort of a, a, a masculine edge to it. Um, but anyway, I, I love wearing this fragrance. This is a, this is a great, you know, stabilizer fragrance. But the reason why I wanted to bring it up is that according to Alessandro, this is what his lovers have said his crutch smells like. My man, it smells good. And so he wanted to recreate that. So Duro, <laughs> which is an interesting name too, um, is his version of that. So there you have it some awesome fragrances that um, puts you in the mood, if you want to say that, or some awesome fragrances uh, to, you know, like a, like a queen bee, uh, exude your confidence to, that, uh, to the population that are, is around you. Now, I want to loop back on this because as I've been talking, I, and just so I'll give you one more, I haven't put on any perfume today. I was waiting to actually put this baby on and all I'm getting in the air as I've been talking and I'm moving my arms and all the rest of it is this divine fragrance. It has dried down a bit. I am getting a beautiful floral musky tone to it. There are other elements in here too, but this is something to look out for everyone. Alora, done. My editor has walked in. We gotta go. I'll see you guys all on the next Mate Talk.